Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's September 10th, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number uh, 710. Fuck Skype. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, and we have Dr. Edward Angelini Cook with us. Yay! Whee! I think uh, somehow he's changed positions on my screen, but that's okay. It's fine. It's fine. We can still <laughs> see everybody. That's all that matters. Anyways, it'll be okay. It will be. All will be fine. All so. We just hate big brother corporations because they're not doing very well with the money that we give them. Thanks. Anyways. Mm -hmm. So moving right along. Uh, So, Dr. Edward, I've got a key question for you. What's that? Have you been practicing self-care? Well, I love that question, Gary. Thank you so much for asking. Uh, You know, I have. I don't know if you know this, but I'm doing a show uh, for the first time in in 10 years. Um, And that is one of the most self-care things that I have done for myself in a very long time. Well, I mean, first of all, congrats on starting a Just for Fans. I mean, we we are very (laughs) sex positive and supportive here, so (laughs) it's, it's time. That that's happened. Wow. Um, yeah. Mm. No. No. <laughs> no. Not, not a JFF show. Not a JFF oh, no, no, show. No. It's not JFF. It's only fans. Like um, it is only fans. <laughs> it's the other platform. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's a musical. A musical. A musical porn. <laughs> That would be terrible. Oh my God, can you, I'm sorry. Can you imagine? Hey, there no, have been be. there have been off Broadway porn musical type productions somewhere in my basement. I believe I still have the vinyl cast recording to a show that was a mixed cast done. I think in the seventies. My dad picked it up like at a garage sale or something. I wish I could remember. Um, Name anyway, it. what the name of it is, but yeah, there's one that's like between two dudes, and you know, it's about them being gay, and you know, another one's like a group ensemble, and it's like called Make My Body Come or something like that. Oh yeah, it's it's <laughs> <laughs> apparently I get to go looking for this for for the doctor. <laughs> He's always yes. very, very <laughs> two of my two of my favorite things: musicals and porn. Oh please, I need it. But well, I think know. the idea of an actual musical porn does not sound. Fun. Although, okay, I'll put it like this. <laughs> I think I would be okay if there was no singing during the sex. Well, I was just gonna like, say it's gotta be it's gotta be very old school Broadway. It's gotta be very Rogers and Hammerstein Park and Bark. Like, yeah. I, you know, like you know, like like I'm going to entrance and I'm gonna have a song and then fuck 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 and then song and then change scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, just just take away all the choreography and replace it with fucking. <laughs> oh my god, the dream fuck. Like not the dream ballet, the dream fuck. Oh my oh, god, no. Yes. Just nothing but like it's just it's just fucking like and you could do the style in an homage to the sex scene in rent fair mm. you could have like multiple like situations with different yeah. lighting and sheets and, yeah. and yeah anyways oh, not really sheets. 
Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, people, where uh, all the gay things come together in a weird blender of moments. <laughs> that being said, uh, <laughs> the reason I asked you the question is because it's landscape of relationships. And um, you were super excited about us like having this discussion about self-care. So for those that don't know or would like to maybe uh, learn the best way about what self-care is, what shall we tell them? Um, all the things. Um, <laughs> well, first, like, let's kind of frame, like, what, what do we think self-care is? I think that self-care is, like, really much like a buzzword right now. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I kind of want to get a good idea as to, like, what do we think that self-care is so that we can frame this conversation well? Uh, an excuse by introverts to not interact with other people. Mm. Okay. Wow. I mean, it's that's funny. a little <laughs> passive aggressive. <laughs> nope. <laughs> not passive at all. Calling it out. As a person <laughs> who is an introverted extrovert, extroverted introvert, one of those things. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of this stuff. Like, I can turn it on. Like, I'm turning it on right now. But, like... I don't, I don't need to, I don't need to be around people all that much. It's okay. So I think some individuals at the time they feel it's best for them, they decide that self-care is a way to not interact with people um, for them. So they, they withdraw, they pull away. So they game. So they might do some gaming, uh, video gaming, you know, or, or that kind of thing. They might, um, I don't know, you know, read comics uh, or write all sorts of different things. Um, but it's they're focusing on themselves, like what's best for their own self uh, balance, mental health, I guess I would say. So self-care is something that you do for yourself. Yeah. It is, it is okay. something you do that makes you happy, even if it's like a small amount of happy, like go to your favorite restaurant. You're just splurging. The, the, oh, I'm gonna, gonna, Go to the spa. I'm going to play D&D &D for eight hours with friends. That's with people. It's socializing. But it's something you want to do. It's something that you want to do, and it's, you're doing it for yourself. To make yourself happy. Yeah. Very, mm -hmm. very like selfish in nature, but hopefully not being cruel to somebody else. Agreed. Like, I slept in this morning. Right. Like the idea for me, me self-care is something that you do, something you should probably consistently do to um, take care of your own needs or take care of your own care um, rather than relying on someone else to do something. So based on that, Damon, here's the big $25,000 pyramid question, Dr. Edward, because if you missed the pre-show, folks... Here's here's some of what we discussed. Uh, would one say that masturbation is self care? I mean, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> it's a form of self care. It is. Yeah, it is definitely a form of self care. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking because I'm looking ahead on the dock and I don't see it listed, so I just wanted to get clarification. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's a. <laughs> That is a really good, um, like, segue. So uh, the National Institutes for Mental Health uh, define uh, self-care as a means of taking the time to do things that help you live well and improve both your physical health and mental health. When it comes to your mental health, self-care can help you manage stress, lower your risk of illness, and increase your energy. So even small acts of self-care in your daily life can have a big impact. So the, I think the important thing when we're talking about self-care is it has to be something that um, uh, manages your stress, lowers your risk of illness, and increases your energy, right? Right. Okay. So and jerking off of does this, all of that. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, benef the, the benefits of masturbation are wonderful. Um, <laughs> So, so, it, so, some examples um, that the that NAMH gave were um, exercise, uh, eating well, and hydration. I mean, you know, coffee is there's water in coffee, right? <laughs> yeah. um, 
Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I always tell my friends. They're like, Edward, you need to drink more water. I'm like, there is water and coffee. Thank you. Um, regular sleep. That's something that I, I advocate for a lot. Um, not excessive sleep or not little sleep. Uh, mm -hmm. Relaxing activities, like we were talking about, um, you know, uh, I think that, you know, getting like D&D, &D, right, falls into that. Something that you find to be relaxing, helpful. Mm -hmm. um, goal setting, right? So, and what I mean by that are realistic goals. I'm not talking like, you know, you're going to sit down and be like, I'm going to write the next great American novel tomorrow. Um, that is not realistic. Um, pra practicing gratitude um, is something that can really help uh, you, our self-care. I think we've kind of talked about that. Um, like the three good things. Mm -hmm. Did we talk about that? Yeah. Um, that falls into that category. Practicing acceptance and mindfulness um, are other examples of practicing self-care. And staying connected to others um, can be a form of self-care. So that, um, there is a, let's put a pin into that one, mm. okay? Um, but, question, so. yeah, what isn't here? Um, what, what do you think are examples of self-care that are not listed? Getting a haircut. Okay. Because I think most people feel good after they've got a, a, a fresh cut, like a uh, freshen up of some kind. Right. Like, I mean, and, and I'm thinking about the, the gays that I see on social media. They're like, oh, got my power up or whatever, you know, and they show off that they got their hair cut or their beard trimmed or whatever. Oh, my God. I love that. Yeah. Oh. Because I think it gives you a little bit of a self-confidence boost. A little I know boost? Well, I know every three weeks when I get my hair cut, like I'm, I go, with, I go to my barber every three weeks and luckily she does morning appointments before I have to start work. So I go straight from there to work. Um, what I know is the last four days before the end of the three weeks usually, or if her schedule doesn't allow, I have to wait a fourth week. Like I'm noticing every single day in the mirror, how the hair around my ears is like not as crisp and clean as I would like it to be because I keep my hair short. So it's much more evident. I think when you have shorter hair, like your hair's growing out, it doesn't quite look as yes. like pressed or on point. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just a little bit of a boost, like, you know, um, and those lines, uh, pedicures, manicures, mm. um, yep. relaxing activity. Yep. Yeah. You want to touch this body? Go right ahead <laughs> with consent. Yeah, my... See how that works. Anyways. Like massages to me is something that would be like a relaxing activity. That would yes, um, I love a massage. Yes, I need one. It's been so long. Um, but I'm I, I'm not necessarily seeing anything that's not here. This um, is probably going to sound a little strange for people, but I think it counts uh, medical stuff. So like I go Yay! to I go to my chiropractor on a regular basis. I kind of need to see them when I see them, like because I have ongoing things. But as a person who didn't do it for a very long time, never, never until older adult, so to speak, recently, mm -hmm. um, I consider it self care because I look forward to the fact that like what it benefits me, so my body isn't so messed up. Um, thank you for bringing that up. One of the things that I noticed on this list that wasn't here is, um, like literal taking care of yourself, uh, like medical, mental, um, mm. like financial, uh, like paying bills is a form of self-care. Yes. Yeah. And doing it's funny. Your, yeah. doing, doing your chores is a form of self-care. That's funny because one of the things I realize, yeah, I can see that because I intentionally, usually, I guess it was only a couple of days ago, the first of the month, I pay all the bills. And I and that's a, uh, well, not all of them, most of them. Mm -hmm. Other ones are um, later in the year or later in the month. But, um, and, you know, every everything from... Like, you know, water bill and gas bills, those kind of bills always have like auto pay. Do you want to like sign up for auto pay and do all these things? And I'm like, no, I don't. 
And I realized why, because I take enjoyment out of doing it every month and putting aside the time to do it myself. Um, Cause it makes it, I, I guess, I, I guess it does make me feel good. It makes me feel responsible. If that makes sense. It makes me feel like I'm doing, um, I'm doing it for, you know, obviously reason because it keeps the roof over my head and pays, you know, keeps the, this very wonderful, like, um, I'm actually kind of cold in this moment because of the AC on <laughs> like this, having this AC going and, and I just did laundry today. So like those kind of things, it keeps, pay, it makes sure that those things are paid for. Well, um, yes. Right. David, I was going to say like financial mental health is a whole thing. Like mm-hmm. if you're stressed about paying your bills, like, yeah. like knowing the fact that you have the ability to pay the bill and that it's done mm-hmm. is like something you can, it's kind of a task item, cross it mm-hmm. off your list, whatever. But yeah. you know, I agree with you. Like it, it does empower you. Um, I think it's a rite of passage as you move into adulthood and independency that we, at least in my upbringing, didn't have a whole lot of that. So I had to figure that out on my own and create budgets. And I do it all the time. And I, you know, am constantly looking at making sure that everything's accounted for and taken care of and and that kind of stuff. I'm actually really liking this whole, like, power up analogy. Like, you know, power up with self-care. <laughs> <laughs> T, I'm, I'm putting, I'm trademarking that, um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, and, you know, realistically, we can kind of put that into goal setting, um, into that category, but I think that it's important to delineate and like that has its own category as well. Um, so I think the reason why I'm bringing this up is that, uh, when I hear of self-care, uh sometimes when people are talking to me about the things that they're doing for self-care i want to ask them are you practicing self-care or are you avoiding something really is that what you is that what you're bringing to this podcast because i didn't ask for that (laughs) (laughs) and they feel called out it's like the so it's like the meme online i see myself in this post i don't like it Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can understand um, that though. Yeah. The, that's why, you know, in the definition that I gave before, right, helps manage stress, lowers your, your risk of illness, and increase your energy by not by not going to the doctor, by not taking care of your chiropractic health, by not doing this, you're increasing your risk of illness. Um by you know increasing your energy. If you're avoiding something, I'm sorry. That is not um, increasing your energy. You're just delaying Mm -hmm. uh, the inevitable. Um, And you're not helping managing your stress. You're just putting it off until the next day. And then that like like stress that was at a four is now going to be at a 4.2. Right. Yeah, I mean, I I think that's fair. I think about how like Damon and Jim go gaming. Like that to me is like a form of self-care. But if they're doing it, like if they're like, oh, let's pick up an extra game like on Monday night or Tuesday night or something, knowing that the dishes are piling up or that the garbage needs to be taken out or mm-hmm. like, I think that's the the daily balancing act we go through. I think we do a lot of self-negotiating about like, well, I can do that later or that'll take care of that or, you know, and you kind of push things around or kind of avoid or whatever and you don't quite get to that. When the reality is, as challenging it can be like a little like back to the goal setting is like doing a little thing. Mm-hmm. So like, I know as I've gotten older, like I don't have the stamina that I used to. So things that take a whole bunch of exertion, I'm like, Oh, I don't know. Like, yeah. and I kind of have to like make mini goals and be like, okay, so every day after I'm working done working both the jobs, what if I just do this one thing mm-hmm. and then this one thing. And if I have to spread it out over several days, then at least it's yeah. getting something accomplished and I feel better about it in the end. Absolutely. Um, the most for me was, and you know, this was during COVID, but I know I avoided for many years cleaning out my office um, mm. because it kept, you know, it was the, it was the drop off place. It was where everything kind of fell. It was the, um, you can just sit in there and honestly, you can close the door and forget about it. And um, for years that's what it became and the always the idea like jim would mention it and i 
I would think about it was like, we should probably, you know, clean up that office. And we were saying like, yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. It never happened. And then, oh, hey, um, <laughs> you got fucking furloughed. So <laughs> you have like all the time in the world to do whatever you need to do. And I mm-hmm. remembered um, Jim and I going into the office and um, him kind of, he sat in my office chair and we just sort of forced ourselves to like do it. And I'm be honest, I'm so glad we did it. Did it because it it looks so much better. I can have the door open. It's not this whole like secret, like, you know, everyone has that closet in their house, like where they throw everything and they they want. Um and since it's been done, and I actually recently um I took some time off after some event, I can't remember. But I intentionally was like, now that this is done, I'm gonna take some time and actually I took a couple of days and actually re-cleaned everything. So it's much more presentable again now than it was like a few months ago. Well, and it's interesting that you bring that up, Damon, when you talked about like with the pandemic and that. I think American society, I'll speak from our perspective, I think we as a country went through a big mental health challenge with the shutdown and Mm -hmm. found so many reasons to not do things. Mm Mm-hmm. And so, but I also think possibly, and I'd be interested to know what you think about this, Ed, like, if this is where I think sometimes self-care is used as an excuse. Like, and and I say it like this because, and I'm not saying that people aren't, that they're, I, I guess what it comes down to is, like, they're avoiding certain things because they're pivoting and focusing on other stuff. And they feel they that just don't have the bandwidth or the energy or the whatever to take on that thing. And what made me think of that is when Damon was talking about the very issue that, well, you just put things in the office and like, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. And it's like, mm-hmm. well, now you have all the time in the world and you don't have an excuse. And I think it's what the pandemic did at a lot. And I think uh, quite a number of people, maybe the majority were like, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> like they still kind of like yeah. passed on doing the thing that they kind of should have been doing. Um, mm-hmm. Even though they had all the time in the world. Because they were like, I think it forced a lot of people to like consider their mental health without calling it that. So we found other coping mechanisms because I think a fair amount of people keep themselves busy to avoid stuff. And then when all the time in the world was available, they came up with mechanisms to take up the time. So they were still avoiding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't know if people really understand self-care in terms of this definition i think people yeah. really they just called it they blanketed it and call it self-care because that made the yeah. most sense yeah to me sometimes that was one of the when you were talking about the definition of self-care one of the thing, thoughts that came to my mind is because you mentioned buzzword and i'm like yeah people are saying oh i'm doing this for self-care but realistically they're not mm-hmm. like if you the definition that you gave they're doing it they're calling it self-care, but re- really it's either one or two things. It's either I'm doing it because I want to, or I'm doing it to not do something else that I probably should be doing. Yep. Yeah. That is, that is, uh, I notice. I mean, I notice that with myself too, uh, you know, because sometimes I look at what I can do for self-care uh, and I'm like, you know, hey, I know that after I do this thing, I'm going to feel better, right? Um, You know, oh, uh, you know, we were talking about the show that I'm doing, right? So this choreography, um, you know, I really want this show to be great. And I want want myself to do a great job. Um, Do I feel super confident doing choreography? No, I do not. Um, But, you know, in order for me to get confident with it, I have to do it i have to practice it um so that is a form of self-care because after i practice it and i get on that stage i feel more able to do it um and i don't feel as lost as i was before i worked on it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um 
or like, you know, we're talking about bills, right? Like, you know, I know that when, you know, Damon, you were talking about the beginning of the month, right? When I pay my credit card bill, um, it hurts, right? I know that like it hurts, but I know after I do it, I feel relief. Um, right. I feel a sense of, of accomplishment. Um, mm-hmm. And, and that's awesome. Uh, so, you know, there's, I guess, an idiom, I don't know if this is the right word for it, but I like to tell people um, for, you know, in terms of like a short term discomfort for a long term gain. Right. That like, I think we look at, we look at self-care as only a short-term thing. Um, Mm -hmm. When I think we really need to frame self-care as there is, there can be discomfort um, in self-care so that it can help benefit you for the long, for long-term. Right. right? Yeah. I think so. I think it's fair. So, you know, since this is the landscape of relationships, um, I thought it would be cool because, you know, a lot of times we look at self-care as like, it's like a individual thing. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, one of my friends, uh, likes to say self-care isn't selfish, um, which, you know, I agree with, but like, can we, is there room for us to, um, discuss self-care in the context of relationships? Hmm. I could think so. I would like to think so. Well, here's my question. Are we thinking of self-care in terms of the relationship taking self-care or the people within the relationship taking self-care? What about both? Okay, no less us. Okay, meme. <laughs> both. So the reason, so um, I've been thinking about this because as somebody who works with relationships, um, I think that there are, and like theory tells me that this is true as well, um, that there are like three different self states. Um, We have our self state, um, like in relationships, right? We have our self state, we have the other person in a relationship self state, then we have the relationship state. Right. Um, and there's a concept in family, family uh, therapy um, called differentiation of self. And it's one of the cornerstones within uh, Bowen's uh, family system theory, which states that um, families are an emotional system in and of itself. Um, mm. And a person's ability to manage the relationship between their self state and the relationship state um, requires something called the differenti- the differentiation of self self it's kind of like a like a um you know like a level mm-hmm. um where like if you tip too much this way you're too you're too fused with yourself and if you t- uh, tip it the other way you're too fused with the relationship mm. So it's like the ability to get it right in the middle, right? It's like a level, um, like equilibrium. Mm. Does that make sense? It does to me. I mean, like that, like it, it, it's the idea of while we're two individuals in the relationship, we're also in a relationship together. And there's going to be this odd balancing for each person to make sure that they are taken care of and that also the relationship is maintained in some way. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, um, I, I think of it as like the like uh, scales, like the scales of justice is like the image, like the concept of like you're trying to to find the middle ground where they're equaling each other or close to equaling each other uh-huh. um, in that. And I mean, I, th- I think that does make sense because more often than not, I think when when the relationship most likely is out of balance is because the self is out of balance. Mm. Mm. Good thought. Just saying as the single one in the room. Anyways. (laughs) The single ones. (laughs) 
I do think, I bet I do think it is an interesting concept. I do think it's important to think about because sometimes the, it depends on what you want, like, not what you want, but like the idea of, it's going to sound kind of cliche, and I'm not always agreeing with it, but if you can't, you know, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? That kind of like RuPaul's on statement, somewhat true. Like, yes, you should be taking care of yourself. And you should be able to before, or not before, but, you know, as well as if you're in a relationship, make sure that relationship, you know, is working. Because, again, if it's not working, then it's not a relationship you want to be in. Um, Then if you can try to make things work and see if you can find that balance again. But if you can't, then there's no point in continuing the relationship. You know, that's a maybe a moment of self care or self realization where, like, I'm doing all of my stuff for me and not, or they're doing all their stuff for them and they're not taking care of me or not doing anything for me. This isn't really working. Maybe I should bounce. Like, that kind of idea. Mm-hmm. Well, and also, like, I, you know, with this idea, um, if you have like two people who are in a relationship, one has a very good sense of like differentiation of self, right? They recognize like their ability to um, like maintain their own like self state, their I state, um, and also, uh, you know, contribute to the relationship. Somebody who doesn't have that is going to look at their ability to like, you know, focus on themselves as a threat. Mm. They don't love me. They don't care about me. They're they they're they're too focused um, on themselves. So like when I hear somebody and they say, uh, you know, uh, before what what's that RuPaul thing? If you don't, how the hell if how the hell are you gonna love somebody else if you don't love your you know? Yeah, I I I mean I think that's pretty much on the nose, right? Like. I think that a lot of people blame others because they're not doing the things that they need to do to take care of themselves. Mm. And they're blaming other people um, for how they're not showing up for themselves in their own lives. Yeah. Wow. I just had a moment. Um, (laughs) But to like, you know, um, to frame that of those like two different dichotomies, right? Like, Somebody who, like I, like I said, right, somebody who is really differentiated, um, they're going to be able to manage conflict um, without a lot of emotional reactivity. Um, they're going to be, me- they're going to be able to maintain, like, like I said, their I state. Um, they're, and they're going to ha- have the ability to like reach a compromise with somebody. Uh, but somebody who isn't differentiated, they are going to approach situations with a sense of emotional reactivity. Um, they're going to, they're instead of like, um, maintaining their own I state, they're going to be more comfortable fusing with others or blending Mm. their emotional states with others. Remember, like I talked about, um, when I hear people say, well, you made me, uh, you made me do that. Or, you you know, you make me feel this way. I red flag, (laughs) right. (laughs) Or like, you know, like, you know, um, Because I'm like, that is, you're not taking responsibility for your own emotions there. Um, Or they will exhibit what is called emotional cutoff. This is where somebody will manage their own emotional distress, their own emotional uh, discomfort by creating these emotional and physical distance with somebody, right? Like, oh, I can't talk to you right now. Um, You know, we're done. Um, And... I think it's important to know that we all, you know, a lot of this is, you know, uh, happens because of how we were raised, right? A lot of different factors go into this. Um, And it doesn't mean that we can't work towards uh, differentiation uh, because that that would be the ultimate goal, I think, um, with that would be a great action towards self-care. Mhm. Mhm. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Um. Yeah. 
So, and, you know, for somebody who say is undifferentiated, self-care is not really, is, is, I would argue that if you're not differentiated, how are you able to practice self-care? Mm, in a relationship or just in general? In general. Mm. That's fair. Because you don't know what you want. You wouldn't necessarily no. know. You would be relying on someone else to tell you what to do. Or tell yeah, you how to all feel. Of, like a lot, yeah, a lot of your actions are motivated by like the, yeah, your emotional relationship with other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think that speaks to a bigger thing, could speak to a bigger thing, I guess I want to say. They may know no different. Mm. Exactly. You, you only know what you know. And if you've been in relationships, family dynamics, where this is the norm, there there's there's a whole other experience to be had. But explaining that or showing that or revealing that, exposing mm-hmm. someone to that can can be a whole thing in and of itself. Right. Um, so I actually just had an. Um, so if if self-care is this like, you know, buzzword that we have right now. And like a lot of self-care seems really selfish. It seems really like, like self-interested, you know, like um, going to get a massage, going to get your nails done, going to, but it, you're not looking underneath that to say you're taking care of yourself. Right. right? Um, where, but like, isn't that I what think, the word means? Like you would think, it, wouldn't you? You would like, do, but it, I feel like, I feel like self-care has this like, sense of like it's a gift it's a treat um yeah. it's like just des- it's like dessert yeah right because i think that's how it's presented in culture like especially exactly. in, in, in popular culture i think it comes across as like oh my god so i went and got a mani petty and then i got a psl because that was self-care right like like i think like those are the things that like social media is kind of like promoting or putting out there instead yeah. of saying you know what i took some so- i took some time I did a thing for me. I went and got a manicure. I got a pedicure. I went and got myself a great like daytime beverage because I'm taking care of me. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, like it's a whole, I think it's just the lens of how it gets stated. Yeah. I think that's the, that's the, that's the thing. Like if, if you're just like you, your, your example is like the perfect example of like pop culture, like bullshit, like, like, Oh, I'm going to do this for me. And then, and then, and then like, there's a difference between, Oh, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing self care for me, which sounds very selfish and very mm-hmm. negative to where I'm taking time off because I am doing all of these other things to actually do something for myself, which doesn't sound again, kind of spinning the lens a little bit. It doesn't sound as negative are as selfish when you kind of put it in that context. You know what? I had a busy ass fucking week at work. I haven't had time to do anything that I wanted to do this Saturday. I'm going to take a day off. I'm not going to, I'm going to turn my phone off and I'm going to go get this massage at this place that I have been wanting to go to Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, somebody who is um, undiffer- uh, undifferentiated, right, would look at doing something like that as like, oh, I'm taking care of myself. And, you know, but it's like, well, like, Rebecca, are, like, I don't think you're actually taking care of yourself. I think you're just avoiding the bigger, the bigger issues yeah. in the room here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Um, I can't, I can't stand all of this shit going on around me. I'm going to the spa. Like, I'm going to do this for me. Like, that's different. Yes. And I think that um, that is, you know, somebody who is undifferentiated, you know, somebody who's, like, fused with these ideas, um, they're, like, enacting their relationship with culture, right? Um, You know, they're like, well, culture is telling me I have to do these. Or pop culture is like, this is what, this is what I need to go this is what I need to do in order to take care of myself when it's actually, is it though? Well, I mean, I find that I interesting. Don't think it is. I think it's a double-edged sword. Like I think the interpretation, the labeling, the choice of language, it's all like kind of up for grabs because I think about how recently a coworker took time off to extend a weekend and they said that they needed to take a mental health day. 
I don't question the fact that they that they said they need to take a mental health day, but I can imagine other people doing that and saying, well, that seems selfish because there's work to be done. And it's like, right, but the, the, I think the reason they're doing it is because of the work and they want to be able to continue to do the work. Right. Hence, mm -hmm. they're focusing yeah. on themselves. Right. And taking a take... mental health day or two. Yeah. Like, you know, plus a part and, of me is like, you don't know their life. Right. Like, you, you know what you know, which is X percent. No, I mean, no, you're, you're, you're very much on the mark there. I think that it's, I think it's a personal decision, right? Like, you know, like we said before, with the definition, self-care should help you manage your stress. If you don't want to go back to work because of the like piles of emails that you're going to have and this, um, it's like, okay, is that going to help you manage your stress? Um, or is that going to like, are you just delaying it? Or do you actually need that time in order to help practice some mindfulness? Right. Because I think that like, if you go on a vacation, um, it, you really should budget time to in between to buffer the vacation from returning back to society. Well, that's what one of the um, YouTube uh, channels that I subscribe to talks about. It focuses specifically on Disney. Um, but what I find interesting that they talk about from time to time is they say, while it's great that you are taking people and you're going as a group and you make a plan, the one thing you have to be able to do is let go of the plan. Mm. Yes. Because things will happen that you cannot plan for. There will be weather events. There will be like, you know, temper tantrums. There will be blazing hot sun. There will be exhaustion. There will be dehydration. There will be like all these things that they kind of like, you know, just rattle off. And they're like, so be ready to take some downtime. Be ready to pay yep. attention to your dynamic and be like, how many minutes or seconds are we away from a meltdown? <laughs> and I find that really interesting. I mean, it's very much kind of from a parent perspective, but I think about that like as a very realistic thing that we should be able to do in any of our social dynamics. So whether it's like, you know, if it's me and Damon hanging out and we're doing something and I'm catching, you know, this energy that they're not as up as I am or, you know, whatever, it would probably be better for the relationship of us as friends for me to like not try to keep going full steam and then, you know, leaving them behind. Also, I am a huge advocate of uh, having these conversations beforehand um, mm. and setting the expectations of like, hey, you know, if one of us runs out of steam, it's perfectly okay for you to go back to the hotel and you, you know, I'll just continue on. Um, yeah. Like know yourself, you know, be able, be willing to advocate for your needs, be willing to practice your own self-care within a relationship. Ooh, see what I did there? Mm -hmm. Well, and I think like what I was thinking of that you were going in the direction of that I'll swing into is like, I think of it as like safe word. Like if you know that like things aren't kind of working or whatever, like talk about signaling, talk about like, what is the thing that you want to let me know? That'll be kind of your out, especially if you know, within the dynamic of your friendship or your relationship, your, you know, whatever that thing is with someone else, if that person is not you know good with crowds or being around strangers or whatever that they can say to you you know they might they might kind of make an announcement not announcement to the group but they might say to you be like hey i have to go check in with my family mm -hmm. which is code for i'm short circuiting like this isn't working for me i need to get away i gotta go back to my room like right. whatever you know what i mean and like and and that way you understand what's happening without it turning into a thing, which could then be stressful in and of itself. <laughs> yep. Because some of us are caretakers, just like, what do you mean? What's going on? I mean, how can I help? You know, and it's like, no, no, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> and that is, that. that's actually a really good um, example of differentiation of self. Like, you know, a um, undifferentiated, you know, couple or system would be like, oh my God, let me take care of you. Where like a different, no, 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 I got this. Like, I need to take care of myself. You do you, you can, you are fine here. I'm going to take my moment and I'll be back. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I think is very, you know, it's a good way to know if you know yourself 
kind of feeling like, yeah, I, I'm, my battery is running low or whatever, you know, phrase you want to use and be like, I need to step away. I need to get away from myself or else I'm not going to be good to be around. <laughs> I'm not going, I'm, so I need to take care of myself. And it also, is, as Gary was mentioning, sometimes it might be a good idea to kind of maybe see someone else and be like, well, maybe they, if they're withdrawing, like it might be a signal for something that they may not know about themselves. Yep. Right. And I mean, and I think some people are better at it than others. Like I think about people who have a medical condition, like per, let's say just as a general example, you know, they're diabetic. Mm-hmm. If they know their body and like how things are going and what their nutritional intake has been recently, they might realize that their sugar's going down. Right. And so instead of turning it into a thing, like, you know, and, and pulling away from whatever is happening, the dynamic, they might just be like, you know what? Like, I, I, I'll be back in like 15 to 30. Like, I gotta go, whatever. Um, and not really like have to turn it into a whole thing and be like, I gotta go back to my room. I have to take some insulin. You know what I mean? Like, I think yeah. people who naturally are more fluid, I guess, with their day to day, like living and what those things are in the dynamics. Um, are much more attuned to to this concept of like knowing when is when mm-hmm. and what you need to do for that in that moment, whatever that may be. Yeah, um, I definitely agree. And you know, this also reminds me of uh, one of our previous uh, topics of like planning your party. Um, mm. You know, like sometimes in those kind of situations, maybe I may be unaware of the fact of like you know, maybe I need to check my insulin right now, or maybe I need to eat something. So like being open to suggestions from other people, um, and check-ins like, Hey, when was the last time you ate something? Hey, you look kind of lethargic. Are you okay? Do you need to take a break? Um, you know, so that you have those supportive people who kind of have their, who are able to kind of, uh, take care of you. Right. Mm-hmm. Or like the commercial, maybe you need a Snickers bar because you're being <laughs> cranky. Maybe. <laughs> or you just have to stop and sit on a toilet for a few minutes because you, you got to poop. Who knows? <laughs> Sometimes you got to poop. Everybody, Everybody does. Poops. Everybody, Everybody does. Everybody but poops. listen, I'm just as a person who like I'm just going to advocate it from a, uh, from a health perspective. I think people like try not to talk about it. And I'm like. I'm sorry, on a one-on-one, or if people are being real, there are some times when you have a bowel movement, your day is fucking fantastic afterwards. <laughs> like, 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 because you didn't realize how much that was affecting you. Like, how much, like, you holding that, like, in or whatever was was an issue. And I think there's, mm-hmm. like, that, like, there is a whole gut-to-brain connection. And I mm-hmm. think that, like, you, after you have done that you're like right you're like i feel better i feel lighter like i could take on the world like whatever i'm not saying every time but i'm saying sometimes that and i think sometimes we like we get busy with life whatever that is and we might kind of forget and be like oh maybe i just maybe i just need to take a moment on the throne Mm -hmm. who knows Mm -hmm. um yeah yeah well let's keep moving because that, that's a whole I'm not going to veer off this train I'm, I'm, we're not going to keep talking about that keep going that can be another topic poop <laughs> um so this so well so this kind of <laughs> this begs a question about um self-care within relationships so um the National Institute for Mental Health um as well as you know um advocating for self uh, for self-care they also advocate for social self-care um, that like, you know, it's really important that, uh, you know, we are social creatures. We, we, you know, sometimes we thrive on our connection to other people, whatever that may be. Um, so, you know, the whole, that quote of no person, no, well, no man is an island. I'll, you know, rephrase it. No person is an island and neither mm-hmm. are you. Okay. Um <laughs> So, so sometimes self-care is connecting with others and working on our relationship with others. Um, right. And again, that, that, can, that can be uncomfortable, 
right? Yeah. Um, and there is this thing that I use with couples um, as kind of like a, a weekly toolkit um, that they can do. Um, it's the six hours to six hours a week to a healthy relationship. <clears throat> but basically it advocates for these like little short things that you can do in a day um, that will help uh, improve your relationship, right? Like you can care for your relationship and, you know, they're as simple as, uh, you know, kissing each other in the morning and at night, um, you know, uh, practicing affection. Um, the ones that some of my, you know, some of the people that I, I work with don't do is to have a stress reducing, reducing conversation after work, um, where, the goal is not to solve any problems. The goal is just to listen to each other about something that is happening outside of the relationship that is increasing your stress level. And it's just my job to listen and to validate your feelings and not side with the person who is the person thing, whatever that is causing you stress, because that's mm -hmm. not going to be helpful. Um, and, you know, cause that can, in and of itself, help reduce your stress, which is what? That is self-care, right? Mm -hmm. That was in the definition of self-care. The right. um, One of the other things is to check in with your partner before they leave for work or whatever and ask them, hey, wh what's on your agenda today and what are you excited about? Um, mm. You know, what's, some, what's something that you're looking forward to today? Um, and then the other thing is, ha is providing space within your um, week to have difficult conversations. Right. Um, hey, is there something that that went well this week? But also, is there something that didn't go well? And we should probably talk about that. Short term, short term discomfort for long term gains. Mm. Yeah. This article that you've linked is really interesting. The six I hours know. a week to a better relationship. I'm like, huh. Um. Yeah, I just I, I find it intriguing. I mean, some of it is it, like I, I like how they break it down to these different categories and then they're like giving totals and then they explain how like each of these little things, either so many minutes per day times so many days or like this times this in a week like this is how it gets you to the six. Um, hmm. Yeah. And the, the other one I didn't know um, I didn't mention is uh, the date night. Um, which is a time, I mean, that's kind of like a, a self-care thing, but like to sit down and talk about, um, uh, things that you are like your dreams, right? Like, Hey, you know, um, are you still thinking about, um, running that 5k that you talked about last month? Um, okay. I mean, I'm not, um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Or, um, you know, sitting that like Jim and I are going on a cruise next month. Um, let's sit down and, and talk about and plan some of the things that we want to do on the cruise, um, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm very excited to go see Mamma Mia on. Um, and I think it's interesting because I realize like some of this is like, well, this is talking about a relationship. I think that you're committed in romantically. I think some of this can also be laid over to friendships. Mm -hmm. Not so much like in six hours a week. But like uh, earlier today, my best friend and I, like we had a phone like conversation, just caught up about like they started a new job. What was their job like this week? What is my thing looking like? What are my next couple months looking like? And and I realized like, while some of my friends, I don't see that often. Like we we have a tendency to kind of touch base. Right. And this is a this is some of that conversation that's happening like what's happening and are you still doing this thing or i saw that you posted about this tell me about it like whatever that may be mm -hmm. so i think all that is is an attribution of like social self-care like being interested in others and yeah and hopefully i would say <laughs> my hope is for you is that they're interested in you <laughs> and like what's going on with yeah. you as well yeah, but like, you know, and other forms of social care, so social self-care is regular check-ins with your boss. Um, uh, you know, uh, coffee dates with your bestie. Um, mm -hmm. You know, going out for that uh, happy hour at work that you're not super excited about, but it can help you 
um, make the connections that you need in order towards that uh, that promotion that you're going to have, right? Like, right. you know, these are all forms of social self care. Yep. <sighs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, self-care isn't always dessert. Yeah. I think that's a really good way to keep it kind of concise is it's not always the personally, personal gratifying things that you want to do for you. Sometimes it's the things that can maintain that balance and may lower that stress of your life. Um, you know, as we've talked about, like, so like financially secure, financially stable are always a very fun way to make sure that like the bills are paid or whatever is always a good thing to have. And then taking care of that or taking care of your physical and mental health are important. Um, yeah, I, this was good. This was a good one. Nice. Um, Self-care is not just masturbation. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It is a form, but it is it's not just. like It can be satisfying, but that satisfaction doesn't always have to mean pleasure, if that makes sense. Oh, so... Self-care isn't always pleasurable in the moment. Right. They might have a long-term goal. Yeah. The, I think there's a term that uh, I use, like, delayed satisfaction rather than instant gratification. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, you know, like we're talking about, since this is landscape of relationships, um, it's helpful for us to reach a healthy differentiation of self by identifying our own needs that are in conjunction with our relationship needs, um, as well as recognizing, accepting, and validating the individual needs of the different members of your relationships. Um, and remember that we're not just talking about romantic relationships, we're also talking about family, friends, coworkers, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, acquaintances, whatever. Um, you're going to do yourself and everybody a huge favor. Mm-hmm. And that self-care isn't selfish. Right. I know who the quote's from. Uh-huh. And I don't say that because it's written on the dock. I mean, I saw the name, and this one we smile, because I was like, oh, I know who that is! <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, I think that's... so. That so that so that's what I got on self care. What are what are what are you all gonna do for self care today? The same thing I do every day. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Masturbate. That was a horrible like riff on picky of the braid and. Mm-hmm. Look at you. I don't, all right, listen, world. Peanut Gallery. I don't need you agreeing. <laughs> Same thing we do every night. <laughs> Try to take over the world. <sighs> well, for a bit of time. In any case. <laughs> uh, I think that's enough self care. I think we're good. You agree? I think we've, we've had Feel a care conversation. Um, mm-hmm. Anymore, and I would be avoiding something. Uh, there's plenty of ways to contact us. What, are you, what do you do for self-care in your relationships or for yourself? And besides masturbation, we know you all do that. If you don't, please start. <laughs> Tell us in multiple ways, including commenting on blog at CubsOutLoud.com. Shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361-CL-TALK at 361-265-8255. You can also comment on our Facebook, 
Twitter and YouTube at comes out loud in the appropriate place of URL. You can also join our entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. If you would like to know when we're planning on recording these shows, you can check out our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. Get various accoutrements such as a consensus by foreplay shirt in many different designs, or one of our newest ones, flexibility for accessibility. These oh. designs. These designs were designed by Smashu. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash video slash Smashu the Bear for all of our merchandise. You can go to Zazzle at com slash comes out loud. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud or send us a donation at paypal.me slash comes out loud. Keeps us running for the over a decade long podcast. Now, so rate us, right, rate us, like us, review us over on our on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, and right here on YouTube. If you're watching the video, you can find my accounts online at box at box bobby box cup box something or other. And yeah, game in. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at theatercub79 on most bear related sites on Facebook. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. No. But you could use it for self care. Wink. <laughs> if you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. We also have Dr. Edbury and Jolini Cook. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, really? Rude. Gary, you were slow on the draw. And I was. Or maybe fast. you were too quick on the draw. Oh. Oh. Mm. oh. Quick on the trigger. Oh. Or both. Came too fast, okay. huh? Mm. Anyways. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that. Um, I have a book for that. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, I would, if you want to get in contact with me, you can find me on Facebook as Ebert AC, um, also on Instagram as Dr. or Dr. Period Unicub underscore sex brain wizard, all one word. Um, you can also find me on TikTok as Dr. Unicub 79. Uh, and I'm on the, the, the X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it, um, as, uh, dr. Unicub after dark. Um, again, not safe for work. And please let me know who you are. Uh, also, shameless plug: if uh, anybody is in the Delaware area and wants to come see me dance around on a stage, uh, I will be in a production of Chess in the ensemble. Uh, you know, dancing around to One Night in Bangkok uh, from September 15th through the 24th at the Wilmington Drama League. Yeah. Anyways, mm -hmm. I love the original song, the soundtrack. Anyways, now with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.